One day, as we sat on the Mount of Olives and overlooked the Temple Mount, I asked Jimmy to lay out the specific nations God reveals will come against Israel in the last days. Jimmy, as we look across the old city of Jerusalem and we see the Dome of the Rock, the third holiest site for the Islamic world, and you also see the Jewish Temple Mount here, which is the sacred mount of the Jewish people across the world. We see two opposing opinions, and it talks about what's up ahead, the battle for Jerusalem. And I want to ask the question, and people want to know, what are the nations that are mentioned in the Bible, in prophecy, that will have a role in the end time scenario of what happens here in Israel? You know, John, that Dome of the Rock speaks to that group of nations, that alignment that will come against Israel because that is a Muslim building. It's a commemorative building that Omar, one of the Muslim leaders, built there on the Temple Mount in 691 AD. But the Islamic world is what is going to basically come together, align themselves to try to destroy the Jewish state, with one exception. Russia is mentioned in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38. Here in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38, which would be the main focus in Bible prophecy, other sections of the Bible we'll look at. But in Ezekiel 38, it talks here in verse two about Magog. Gog in the land of Magog. Now God would be the person, Magog would be the particular state that it's talking about. And according to biblical geography, Magog would have been that land mass north of the Caspian and Black Sea, which is Russia today. Mm -hmm. Then in verse two, it says Meshach and Tubal. And down in verse six, it says Gomer and Tagarma. When traveling in Turkey recently, I picked up an ancient Turkish map. And in biblical times, Turkey was actually divided into four parts, Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, and Tagarma. So we're now talking about Russia and Turkey. There in, in verse five, it says Persia. Until 1936, there were three nations we know today that were known as Persia. Those three nations are Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran. And then you continue on in verse 5, Ethiopia, or Kush in some translations. That would be Ethiopia, Somalia, Sudan. And then in verse 5 again, it says here in my Bible, Libya, or maybe in another translation put, well, that's modern day Libya, Colonel Gaddafi. You have to coordinate this with Daniel chapter 11, verses 40 to 45. It talks about the king of the north. Earlier in chapter 11, you find out that is what we know as Syria today. And the king of the south would be Egypt today. And then going over into the book of Psalm, you go over in the book of Psalms chapter 83, and it talks in Psalm 83 about a list of nations. It mentions here the Ishmaelites. Well, that's modern day Saudi Arabia. And then in verse five, it talks about Tyre. That's modern day Lebanon. So we're now seeing a list of Arab nations with the exception of Russia, who will form this coalition to come against Israel in the last days. All right, the principle that you're using is that when the prophet saw geographical areas in his own day, he had to mention those names as being the people from those geographical areas that would be coming against Israel in the future. John, that's a hermeneutical principle when you look at biblical geography. Who was the author writing about? Who was King David writing about when he wrote the Psalm? Who was Ezekiel writing about when he wrote Ezekiel 38? Who was Daniel writing about when he wrote the book of Daniel chapter 11? They were talking about specific states or nations that were in existence at that time. We don't look at a nation today, we go by what God's word says. So if he's gonna talk about a prophecy, we have to be specific about the locations as well.